Good day, folks. It's been a while, so I decided I'd show you something a little interesting here. I mentioned the clock module a while back, if you folks were watching earlier. And basically what I did is I took apart a analog clock, a real clock, you know, you put on the wall at the dollar store. And I just wanted the module, the little module that runs the clock, which is basically a chip that runs off the 1.5 battery for a pulse, you see, because it's essentially an AC motor, very slow, obviously, but there's a chip on there to pulse with modulator of sorts. And you essentially get AC, a plus and a negative second, obviously, because it's slow, but you still, it's a motor, right? So I took apart all of that and just kept the chip because it's very, my, my, my idea was you could use this as a cap dump, but I had problems because it was so little in the module to get any wires to connect. But needless to say, I was able to connect the wires and solder them and glue them in place. So now I could actually use the module properly. So just to show you guys what I'm doing here, I've got the power supply connected here, feeding the module, the clock, at literally one volt here. And this is our current meter. So it allows, so that beeping basically is when it detects a load. And you can see that meter there because it's a clock, obviously, right? It's like one MA at the most. See it there? If anything, every time it pulses it. Now, what's interesting, this is powering the, the clock module, which is what I said over here, just a little clock module. This gives you slow AC, but the key here is this hardly takes anything to operate. I'm showing it to you on the uh, benchmark power, the bench power supply, so you can see what's going on. But as you can see, if it's less than a milliamp to drive, uh, power cells, electrets, solar, environmental antennas, you name it. As long as you gave it about one volt DC, this is a very good cap dump, essentially for Bedini projects as well, because it gives you like one second to charge the capacitor, one second to dump. So what I've done here, this is the output wires here, well connected and soldered, which is very nice. And that's the little clock module. There's a little crystal that runs it. It's just a chip here, but very efficient. So I noticed I was getting about 20 volts PPV, sorry, VPP. And um, I decided, you know what, just for, for the sake of it, let's put it on a primary side, no, nothing fancy, no high Q or anything. We can do that to enhance, but I just want to show you. So I've got the scope connecting on the secondary side here. And here it's what's happening. You hear the beeping, right? So here's the pulse over here, and then here's the negative. So it's, it, it perfectly oscillates between plus and minus. And over here, you sort of kind of ignore that. That's just the scope's capacitor itself, you could see. You know that drains itself but essentially it's um that pulse plus negative plus negative and we're getting very high 300 and some volts obviously because but again this is a way of getting a um pure potential bring up the voltage as much as you can with very little input now just as an example of what you can do with this now just throwing some ideas out there for all of you. As you see, you got the plus and the negative here. So what you can do with diodes, you can direct this. Since it's powerful enough to drive a transistor, that could be the switch. That's your switch on one polarity. And you see the other side there, and this is 300 and some volts, right? So that'll charge even though it's second by second. You know, or let's say a capacitor like this, right? So one side, essentially, what I'm saying is you direct it to charge the capacitor and right after, because it's timed perfectly, one after the other, then it dumps, it charges, it dumps, it charges, it dumps, all from the same mechanism, you see? So it's just a way of getting your very, very low environmental, those who are working in this kind of stuff, or even regular bedinis, if you want to load it that way, and you're looking for a cap dump, a very super simple cap dump, the timing just happens to be right. So again, and you don't need a transformer. This will switch a transistor just like that because you got plenty of voltage on the output. But I just wanted to experiment with it because I noticed, hey, this is giving me very slow AC. 
So we're creating essentially the required change over time, even though it's slow to induce, you know, it tickles the flux essentially here. And we get regular transformer action out of the deal essentially for very, very little input. But there's no enhancements here. Again, we can do this much more enhancements if you know what I'm talking about here. This is just to show for the example here. So the whole idea is charge the capacitor with the high voltage side and the other side pulses the transistor which dumps that capacitor either through an impulse transducer, transformer, run your load, whatever you want to do or charge a larger device. So this is like not the whole thing. It's far from being a complete, but it's part of a fancy controller that could be running in the background with whatever is already to complement essentially maybe a Bedini or something that's already running nice. But you want to have that high impact once a second, high joule energy, whatever. It could even be a capacitive motor discharge circuit even, right? But the point is trying to use existing mechanisms in their native forms so we don't have to waste circuitry for this stuff and more losses when you can do it with the spike itself. Literally, one side is the cap charge, the other side is the dump, charge, dump, charge, dump, charge, dump. Perfect sequence, right? Just a matter of finding the right capacitor size to match the input voltages and whatnot. And there you have it. So less than one MA to trigger all of this. It works even off of my power cells, which I've demonstrated in other videos. So I'm not just making it up. You can go in my history and see it. But I made it a little nicer now. I actually have the wires well solid so I can do stuff with them. So I'll just see if I have an LED to show you real quick here, the pulse. It's AC, but the LED should block part of the cycle here and light up. So it doesn't matter which orientation really, right? So without zapping myself here, let's see if this will work. Should work. Hold on. Put this somewhere like that. There you see it. I don't want to zap myself. But yeah, you saw it there. So real energy that could charge caps and everything and control transistors, switches, everything, all at under one MA input. So there's a potential well, potential, potential, potential well, <laughs> I know, right? So anyways, with that said, I hope inspiration as always and some insights here people always want very low power low current controllers cap dumps and how to bring up your potential your pure potential so there's one way just recycle a two dollar dollar store clock take it apart and use the chip so same setup here and we're charging the capacitor as you can see it's not the right capacitor for this setup, by the way, but it gives you an example of what we're doing here because, of course, the input is like one volt with less than one MA. So we're doing pretty good, you know. This is very good, actually. So I'm just going to show it to you for a few moments to show you that it actually does charge. 4.6, 4.9, 5. And the meter puts a slight load on here and whatnot, and this is not the biggest capacitor either. Well, you know, it eventually gets there. 5.6. So yeah, we're outputting around 300 to 400 volts here. It gives you an idea of what it could theoretically cap at. 